What's up guys? Today we're going to talk all about pistons. I have talked about pistons kind of scattered around in other videos, but I didn't have a one place for everything about pistons to be compiled, and I thought that that would be pretty useful. I apologize for my voice, I'm kind of dying a little bit, um, so if it's a little bit less clear then I'm sorry for that, uh, but without further ado, let's jump right in. Alright, so just starting with the basics, pistons are blocks that can move other blocks, most other blocks anyways, um, using a redstone signal. So. We have two pistons here, we have the sticky piston and we have the normal piston. The normal piston, when powered, will push the block um, one block over in the direction that it's facing and then it will just leave it there when it comes back, whereas the sticky piston does the same thing, however when it comes back it actually pulls the block back. Um, and there are exceptions to this, uh, and mainly blocks like these cannot be pushed, so we have a whole bunch of pistons behind all of these blocks and when I power them nothing happens. And that's because these blocks cannot be pushed. There are other ones, but these are generally um, the ones that you would want to do and then they can't be done. Uh, ultimately, you might have to just go and test it with whatever block you are like curious about. But yeah, so beacons, dispensers and droppers, furnaces, jukebox, note blocks can be pushed. Um, no chest can be pushed, enchantment table, hopper, um, generally no containers. And then another exception is the shulker box will actually break when you push it with a piston. So instead of moving it or just not moving, it actually breaks as an item. All right, so next we can talk about how you can power the pistons and in what situations they will not be powered when a redstone signal is present. So the easiest way to power pistons is to just power the piston directly. So you can do this by either putting a lever or a button on the back of the piston. Um, if you're putting something directly onto the piston, you can't put it on the sides because they'll break when you uh, power the piston but you can put it on the back because it uh, doesn't break. You can also use repeaters or redstone dust to power the back of it like that, and that'll work just fine. You can put a redstone torch right next to it, uh, and any other way that might you, you might be able to do that. You can also power the block next to it, uh, and this goes for everything else, such as like redstone lamps and stuff. So if we have this gold block here, we can do the same thing where we put a lever on the back of that instead. It'll still power it. We can put a repeater facing into it, we can then also put redstone dust on top of it. And this is because redstone dust powers the block that it's on top of. Um, whereas with repeaters, on the contrary, repeaters do not power the block that's on top of, so this actually won't power the piston at all. Uh, now something very specific to Java Edition, and this is a little bit more indirect way to power pistons, is uh, if you would power the block that's above the piston, so like if we have this, this repeater is powering this block right here, which is just air. Um, so we're not powering we're not powering this block, and we're not powering the piston itself. Um, in Java Edition, this will actually power the piston through something called quasi tech connectivity. Uh, and this is like when you power the block above the piston, the piston below it will also get powered, so like this. Uh, and this is really nice when you have two pistons like this. You can use one repeater to do it. Uh, like that. Now in Bedrock Edition, you can actually power both of them like this with redstone dust. Whereas in Bedrock Edition, you, if you use a repeater like that, it'll only do the top piston. Now something that goes off of quasi connectivity is if you power the block above it rather indirectly, and I say indirectly by because if you do it in a way that doesn't actually cause a block update on the piston, so like with this, we're causing a block update on the piston because it powers the repeater and the repeater then updates all the blocks around it including the pistons if we instead power this block up here so this block uh is getting powered right here um that would power this block and then it would then power because of quasi connectivity it would power this piston right here but there's no block update happening on the piston itself because the block update's happening around this gold block um, it will still work, but you need to actually go and update a block around this. So if we power this, nothing happens. But then if we cause a block update, it will actually power it. And then of course this one's not doing it because it's too far away. Uh, and then likewise with that, you can break it. It'll stay extended until you again update it. This can be useful if you need to do something weird with like signals and your signal and your pistons need to kind of be out of sync with each other. Um, and it's like tight to get a redstone signal down here, but you can instead get like something else. Um, and this again does not happen in Bedrock Edition, so you won't have any weird behavior uh, like this in Bedrock Edition. So if you're in Java Edition and you're having weird behavior with your pistons, check to make sure that you don't have redstone on top of like the couple blocks that are above your piston. Now something that happens specifically in Java Edition that doesn't happen in Bedrock Edition with sticky pistons is that if you have a sticky piston with a block in front of it and you put in 
a pulse length of one, like you power it for one tick and then it is unpowered, it will actually leave the block there. So if I do that really quick, it will leave the block there. Whereas if you do it for anything longer, it will work as you would think it would. This does not work in Bedrock Condition because it will just pull it back even if you have a one tick pulse length. And that's why you often see T flip flops and other things um, with one tick pulse lengths like this. So if we do this guy, and this is a model stable circuit that will work in both Bedrock and Java Edition. Um, this will have only one tick. And then you can do something like this and it will leave this block here. This is why you see this contraption a lot, and this is why this doesn't work in Bedrock Edition, is because it requires that that behavior with that sticky piston, um, which you don't get in Bedrock Edition. All right, so next I want to mention the limitation of how many blocks your piston can push. So a single piston can push up to 12 blocks, um, up to and including 12 blocks. So here I have 12 blocks on this side, all the way down to that end. As you can see, this piston is able to push all 12 of these, whereas this side has 13 and then it's not able to push it. This applies to slime and honey blocks as well um, because this is a lot of blocks to just push in a straight line, but it's a lot easier to hit that limit when you are using slime and honey blocks. Now let's talk about slime and honey blocks. So slime and honey blocks essentially let you push multiple blocks that are not necessarily in a straight line using the same piston. So I'm gonna use a sticky piston here, but it works just the exact same way as um, with a normal piston, except for the normal piston will not pull it back. So the way it works is you have your piston, this piston will directly um, go into a group of either slime or honey blocks. You specifically not cannot have a group of both slime and honey blocks because slime and honey blocks do not stick to each other. Um, so if we do this, the honey blocks will not stick, which we'll talk about more later. So you have a group of slime blocks and then all of your other blocks that you're pushing will go into this group of slime blocks. So if you do like this, uh, maybe we have one on top, we can have one down here or something. All of these blocks will get pushed. And the reason it has to be a group of slime blocks that are directly next to the piston is if we have something like this, where we have a slime block that isn't connected to either a slime block that is connected to a piston or a slime block that's connected directly to the piston. Um, if we have one that's just kind of off to the side like this, it will not stick to anything else like that. Um, so this doesn't work. So it has to be essentially part of this initial group that is then connected directly to the piston. Now these, like I said before, um, they obey the maximum limit of blocks that the piston can push. So if this we have three, we'll have six, nine, 12. So it should be able to do this, but then if I add one more, it will not be able to do it. So that limitation still applies. It also applies when you're trying to put blocks that cannot be pushed. So if we have a block that can't be pushed in front of this, regardless of if this is slime or honey, so let's say we have something like that, um, slime or honey or just like an opaque block, um, it won't be able to push that because it can't push obsidian. And this also goes for if it's not actually directly above the piston. So if you have something like that, instead of pushing these two blocks up and then leaving that one behind, it just won't do it at all. And this is super useful for flying machines. And this is actually how you stop fl most flying machines. Now, if you have a block that cannot be pushed on the side of the piston, or uh, sorry, on the side of the sticky block, then instead of not letting you push it because that block can't be pushed, it just doesn't stick and it just goes through as if that block isn't there at all, which is really, really nice. Um, and not uh, just, so not just blocks that can't be pushed act like that. Also, if you have slime blocks, then honey blocks also will not stick to it as we saw. Um, and this goes both ways. So if we put the piston here, then the slime blocks will not stick. This also goes for glazed terracotta. Um, so glazed terracotta also won't stick and not normal terracotta, specifically any color of glazed terracotta will not stick to either honey or slime, um, which is really useful if you're doing like elevators and you need something for your walls, but then your walls can't stick to your elevator or something like that. Now, something unique about glazed terracotta, um, in addition to not sticking to slime or honey blocks, is that it itself can be pushed using pistons. Um, and this is not the case for other blocks that won't stick, um, minus like subtracting slime and honey blocks themselves. Other blocks that won't stick, like such as obsidian, will not be able to get pushed by pistons, but the glazed terracotta can in fact be pushed by your pistons. And this is something very unique to glazed terracotta. Um, it doesn't actually stick to your sticky pistons either, apparently. Um, but that is something that can be useful if you are 
kind of like trying to move blocks around you can kind of make like a sisilic thing with normal pistons if you want sometimes had to have blocks that will stick and sometimes to have blocks that won't stick um because in that case you couldn't use obsidian because you can't push obsidian with pistons now something interesting is you actually can have other pistons um be pushed by your sticky blocks so if you have something like this those pistons actually do get pushed but they only get pushed or pulled um when they aren't extended so if for some reason this piston tries to push this group, but these two pistons are extended, then they will just get left behind as if they are an unpushable block. But if they are retracted, then they both move. And this is really how flying machines end up working, um, where you have essentially like one piston pushing the other one, and then that one pulls the first piston, and then the other one pushes it again, and so on and so forth, and it just keeps going like that. Um, so this is an interesting property. This works with both slime and honey blocks, of course. Um, and yeah, it specifically has to be retracted so that you need delays if you're going to be doing something like that um, in order for that to work properly. Now, something I wanna quickly mention about slime and honey blocks is that slime blocks are opaque and they will carry a redstone signal because um, opaque blocks will carry a redstone signal whereas honey blocks are transparent. Um, and that just means that if we put a redstone signal into a honey block, Sticky situation, let's go. If we put a signal into a honey block, it will not carry through, whereas with a slime block, it will. And this is important with flying machines, because if you have an observer, the observer usually powers the sticky block. Um, and if you have a situation like this, where the sticky block is the thing that's powering your piston, then this will only work with slime blocks. Um, so if we do this, it'll just like do this over and over again. Um, whereas then if we do this with honey, we will see that it just doesn't work at all. Um, so to that, just nothing happens. So this is important. This can be um, built around by essentially putting your piston on the side of the observer and then putting sticky blocks like this. So that can be bypassed, but just be very aware of that. All right, guys, that'll be it for this episode. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.